according with the ICAO statistics. Every 12 years, their traffic is doubled. But are we prepared for this increment? How can we make this airspace much more productive? We will explain the answer of this question and much more. Let's start with the intro. 50, 40, 30, 20, retard, retard, retard. Performance based navigation, PVN, is the solution that we are going to explain here. Related always to our plane, the Airbus 320. The purpose of these PVN procedures is creating more accurate routes. So, in the same amount of space, we can hold much more planes. So, we can carry much more passengers. In this picture, we can see the trajectory of the planes during a normal standard instrumental departure, with the conventional system and with the new navigation system, PVN. It is evident that with the conventional tools, a single plane uses much more airspace. But in what is base this PVN? It is based in the GPS, which is able to calculate the coordinates of the waypoints very precisely by triangulating some information received from the satellites. Where can we check if the satellites are working properly? It is called RAIN, Receiver Autonomous Integrity Monitoring, which is a technology focused on checking the integrity of the satellite informations. And we, as a pilot, we can check it in the NOTAMS. Here you can find some examples. Is the RAIN the only thing to be aware of? before performing our RNP SAT approach or whatever? No! We must also check the capability of our plane to perform this kind of maneuvers. So we must check the minimum equipment list and also our FCOM in the part of procedures, special operation, performance based navigation, which is the number 51. And um, continuing with the flight preparation, I have a question. Can we choose an airdrome with just PVN approaches as an alternate in our route? The answer is yes, as far as it accomplished with the minimum shown in the table. Visibility of the chart plus 1000 and the ceiling minimum decision height plus 200. For more information, I have written a very nice article in my website flightacademy.info Anyway, I will have the link in the comments of the video. We have finished all pre-flight preparations. Now it's time to fly. But before, I want to talk about some aspects of this kind of approaches that we must be aware of about the modes of the FMA and the final descent point. The standard sequence of this kind of approaches are when in the navigation display is shown the final descent point in the way to point part we can press the approach push button mode on. Afterwards, will appear the blue arrow on it, which indicates where final up conditions are met and where the final descent will be gone automatically. In our primary flight display in the FMA, the final mode become arm and the brick become active. The final mode are up nav for lateral guidance and final for vertical guidance. When both are active, it appears final up in our FMA.
This is the end of the introduction of the R and P approaches. So far, we have explained what is this technology about, and a little bit of flight planning, and how to perform an standard R and P approach. But what would happen if we are too high? Or the final vector is too tight? Or even though, what would happen if we have a GPS problem? This and much more in our next video. Don't forget to join the channel and pressing the bell in order to be the first on watching the new video. Have a nice flight!